thrill me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. Hey yo, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Revealed Rob Show. I am your host, the Revealed Rob, coming at you with a bloody, 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 bloody episode of the show this week. Man, that's right, I'm reviewing the new horror film that is streaming. I watched it on Shudder. It's called Christmas Bloody Christmas. Uh, can't wait to talk about that one. Holiday horror film. And then I've got all the news going on with the rumors surrounding the DC Universe. Got some horror talk. Got some other news. And going to do uh, some Golden Globes talks as well, man. So appreciate you joining in and supporting the show. And can, speaking of supporting, please go over to uh, the Throw Me Podcast Network on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, TikTok. Am I forgetting it? I don't think I'm forgetting it. But go over there. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Subscribe. All that good stuff. We've hit a milestone. 200 celebration and uh, subscribers <laughs> in celebration of that. Uh, my brother made me try eggnog. Yep. You heard that right? Tried eggnog over the weekend. Uh, I'm happy to say it's not as bad as pilk. Pilk is absolutely disgusting. But eggnog is all right. So I might want um, you know, go watch the video. <laughs> the video is up on our YouTube. You can see my full thoughts on that over there. I'm doing all right, man. Doing a little bit of the Christmas shopping. Uh, getting ready for the holidays coming up in a couple of weeks. Hope everybody out there is being safe and I'm able to enjoy the holiday. If you do not celebrate Christmas, you celebrate the other holidays that are going on. Go ahead and do it, man. Don't let nobody judge you for celebrating the things that you celebrate. Definitely won't get no judgment from me, I'll tell you that much. But uh, like I said, man, doing pretty good, relaxing, watched some football over the weekend. My team, Houston Texans, tried to give me a win this week, but they, they didn't. That's all right. You know, we're we're on to the number one draft pick football talk on a movie show. That's fun. Uh, we had the NXT pay-per-view takeover. Uh, no, they're no longer called takeover. NXT, was it Deadline, I think it was called? Uh very good event, even though I don't remember the name. Very good event from start to finish. I really enjoyed that. I like the the uh, championship scramble match they had for the number one contender. I thought that was fun and got really entertaining once all the competitors were in the ring at the same time. Uh, you know, overall good event. New day. Greatest tag team of all time, man. They are now the NXT Tag Team Champions, becoming the Triple Crown Tag Team Champions. Great team, man. Congratulations to the New Day. Overall good event, man. We're all good event. Watch New Girl for the show first time. Uh, that's a show uh, starring Zoe Deschanel. Um, good show. Never really watched it before, but my brother got me hooked on it over the weekend. We watched some episodes of that, so I'm definitely clamoring to get back into watching that. Um, the two are going to be picking the movies for Spin the Wheel, Stream the Deal, the show I have coming to the Throw Me Podcast Network's Patreon, which if you're not over there, go ahead and join, man. we got some fun shows going on over there and more to come in the new year. Uh, let's see, we have a special event happening this week, this Friday. We're uh, doing something special, man, and either, you know, that you'll hear about soon enough. And what else we got going on? I don't believe that event's live Friday. I don't know. I think we're just recording it. But we have a special event coming up. Um, my mind, I swear, I never know what's going on. We just do the thing. That's 
when I say we, I mean me. <laughs> I never know what's going on. But all right, let's, that's enough chit-chat to start off the show. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's review. As I teased earlier, it is called Christmas Bloody Christmas. It is a holiday horror film. Uh, it is streaming. I watched it on Shudder, my all-time favorite streaming service. Never have a single issue with Shudder, as opposed to Netflix, looking at you. Um, and other streaming services give me some hassles with Shudder. Not a single problem ever to be had with me and Shudder, man. So that's where I watch this movie. Let's go ahead and cue up the trailer. And then um, we'll, uh, we'll uh, talk about the uh, the holiday horror film. So here we go. Here's our trailer. The U.S. Defense Department has spent over a trillion dollars on the most cutting-edge robot technology, introducing Robo Santa Plus for the upcoming holiday season. What are you going to do this fine Christmas Eve? I was potentially going to go meet up with a dude. I've blown him off twice already, so... Come on, get a drink with your old pal, Robbie. What's up with you two? Uh, I just grabbed your drink. I talk her out of some tender trash. You didn't oh. talk me out of anything. Sick Christmas! Sick Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! New animatronic state-of-the-art Santa Claus featured at our own TW Bonkers is now the subject of an international recall. Santa? Have you heard from the boys down at the scene yet? They're still down there counting bodies. <laughs> All right, man. What a trailer, by the way. That's the first time I watched that trailer, actually. Um, the name and alone was enough for me to check out the film, but wow. What a trailer. Okay, so that was Christmas Bloody Christmas. Again, as a holiday horror film that is streaming now. I watched it on Shudder. It looks like it's streaming on a couple other platforms. It's running in at an hour and 27 minutes. It's Christmas Eve, and a fiery rector store owner by the name of Tori just wants to get drunk and party until the robotic Santa Claus at a nearby toy store goes haywire and makes her night more than a little complicated. Santa Claus brings a rampant killing spree through the neon drench no scape against a backdrop of drugs, sex, metal, and violence. All right. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes has the movie with a critic score of 71%, while the audience has not entered a score yet. Um, IMDb has it at a 5.2 out of 10. You know, circling back to that uh, critic score, or audience score there. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes doesn't have anything up for an audience score. We're just scrolling through the audience reviews here seeing some four stars some five stars five star five star four star three and a half and one star one star one star three and a half so it's all over the place so it seems relatively positive with a couple of five stars in there all right so what were my thoughts on this terminator meets santa claus film of a freaking thing here <laughs> so it's interesting man I think I've put more effort into watching horror movies during Christmas, especially this year, than I did during Halloween, because I watch horror movies year-round. So the whole, hey, let's watch this movie during this time of Halloween, let's watch this horror movie, watch this, the 30 days of Halloween thing, I don't really get into. Um, 
But when it comes to Christmas time, I'm like, like, give me a Christmas horror movie, man. I want to see it. Give me something. It's just different, right? At this point, I mean, there's a ton of horror movies out there uh, uh, dealing with Christmas time and all that stuff. And I found some good ones. Uh, Better Watch Out is still one that's sticking out to me where I randomly watched that movie. I was like, man, that, that, was, that was a good one. Uh, so Christmas, Bloody Christmas. Going in again, I didn't see the trailer. I just watched it for the first time there. Glad I didn't see the trailer beforehand. Uh, but I went in there, and I was just expecting, like, a wild time. You know, a robotic Santa Claus is going to come to life and terrorize the neighborhood and all that stuff. You know, I mean, nothing we haven't, you know, heard drilled into our heads the last couple of years with all the new robotic technology that's going on in the world. It's like, oh, the robots are going to rise, and they're going to take over, like, freaking Terminator and all that stuff was it Skynet? Um, so it's like, you know, that idea isn't the most, you know, new creative idea out there by any means, but it's a decent idea. So, I mean, the whole idea here is that a military company is turning the robotic, um, weapon, if you will, into a Santa Claus, cause that's going to go well. And, you know, of course it doesn't end up going well. Overall, man, I did honestly, first couple of minutes of the film, I'm like, eh, I don't know about this, you know, kind of, you know, with the, the, the dialogue that was going on and all that stuff, I'm like, eh, you know, whatever, and then as the movie started progressing and going on, I started to realize what kind of film we're in for here, and uh, it's, it's essentially a freaking slasher film. Like, it is 100% like an 80s slasher film, again, meets Terminator, and it just goes insane dude like the movie gets going after a while and it's just it's like what the hell is happening the kills are brutal and that's again where you get back to the slasher of it all or in like the 80s slasher of it all and all that stuff it's like let's get these brutal kills in here you know they, they definitely do that in the film without a doubt uh, you know, I think one of the positives I had of the movie, uh, was the slasher bits. I really like that. If you're going to have an idea like this, that's like so over the top where you have a robotic Santa Claus, that's just freaking massacring people. You know, it's gotta be over the top, man. You got to make the kills over the top and all that stuff. You can't try to make this a uh, straightforward, you know, smart in quotation marks, kind of horror movie. You got to make it like a bonkers out of the world we're getting ridiculous, we're going crazy kind of movie, and they do that with this film, it is absolutely insane, it is ridiculous, but ridiculous in like a good way, because there are horror movies that are ridiculous, and you're like, this is so freaking stupid, saw a couple of those this year, this movie, however, is not as bad as some of those movies I've seen this year, or in the past, I think, I think it was well done, you know, is it over the top and ridiculous, over the top and ridiculous, absolutely, 100%, and it's a good thing that it is, because if they tried to take this too serious, it would have not have worked whatsoever, so I'm glad they pulled the 80s slasher vibe with it. Uh, Another positive, the snow. Dude, the snow in this movie, probably fake or CGI, I don't care, it looks good. (laughs) It looks good throughout the whole movie. Like That was just one of the things where I was watching the movie, I'm like, I like this, man, I feel like I'm in the snow while watching this movie. Um, Just one of my little quirks there. Another thing I liked about the movie is is that it's not a long film. It's an hour and 30 minutes. It does not take too long. I don't know if there's anything I necessarily would cut out of it. Because, you know, I was having a... You know, like I said, once it started really getting going. So maybe some of the dialogue parts I would have cut out. But we're kind of getting introduced to our characters, quirks, and all that stuff. So I guess I understand it to a degree. But once we get, like, going, like, you know, it, 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 it runs. And it runs good. For me, at least. You know, it kept me interested. It kept me in there. And like... Damn it, as ridiculous as it was, there was times where I was on, like, the edge of my seat, like, well, how are we getting out of this one? How are we, how are we going through here? How are we going to get through this? What's going to happen, man? Like, come on. It's even more like, come on! You know, I did that during the movie a couple of times. Not loud, out loud like that, but, you know, there's a couple of times where I was like, come on, man. Hurry up. Do this. Come on. Let's go. You should be doing this. And when a horror movie gets you to do that, it's a good time. So, uh, let's see. I uh, like Jeff Daniel Phillips is in the movie. That's the only person I really recognized in the movie. But, uh, of course, he's been in a lot of Rob Zombie works. He's always good in those movies. Uh, most recently being, of course, Herman Munster. Yeah, and the rest of the cast, unless I came across them in something, um, I'm not sure. But the majority of them are. And, again, that's nothing against them. That's fine. You know, I like it when our horror movies gives us some new new people to look at and see 
you know, how they do and everything. And they, they're fine in the film. Like I said, there's some bits and pieces where I'm like, meh. But, uh, but, you know, what can you do? It's a slasher film. It's not going to be, you know, we're not looking for award-winning films here. And, of course, the awards never really care about the horror genre in general anyways, which makes no freaking sense. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. I enjoyed it. You know, I did enjoy the film. I, I probably could throw it on every year around Christmas time just for that wild, out of nowhere kind of film. Um, going into it a little bit more, and I got to Google this because I don't know the name of the film offhand. But uh, Mr. Wonderful, with the Mr. Wonderful show on the Thermomy Podcast Network, sent me a TikTok video of uh, Goldberg in a Christmas movie where he's just freaking killing people. And <laughs> I will say that that clip was more ridiculous than the film I just watched. <laughs> like, the film I just watched is a hundred times better than that clip of that movie I saw. Um, and I haven't seen that movie, to be honest. Santa Slay, here we go. Santa Slay came out in 2005. Slay, S-L-A-Y, of course. Why not? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> but, um, I might have to watch that whole film later on, just in, just for, you know, seeing purposes, I guess, but yeah, I, I don't think, I think that movie is definitely a hundred times more ridiculous than the movie I just watched, uh, it's not rated, but there is, you know, drug talk, and alcohol talk, and sex talk, and there is sex in the film, um, and there is, of course, violence in the film, which makes a pretty good gift for, uh, movie watching for the season, it's definitely not a lump of coal, by any means, you know, it is, it is a nice little stocking stuffer, if you will, for the, uh, the holiday Christmas watching of blood being spilled everywhere. Because that's what you want for Christmas. So yeah, man. Uh, again, it's streaming. I watch it on Shudder. I always highly suggest you getting Shudder because it's a fantastic streaming service. It uh, looks like it's on Sling if you have Sling TV. It's on Amazon Prime if you have Amazon Prime. And then you can rent it on a bunch of other things. Um, God, it's six ninety nine on Redbox. Dude, just get Shudder. Shudder is the same price. Like seven something. It's worth it, man. Shutter's the best. Anyways, Christmas Bloody Christmas, pretty good movie. I could probably check it out, you know, every year. Again, if don't go into it expecting anything other than ridiculous. <laughs> like just go in there expecting an 80s slasher film mixed with uh, Terminator. Yeah. All right, man. So let's go ahead and jump over to the DC realm of talk. And we're going to cut this um, into, there's like an article that, uh, you know, I think it was from um, Hollywood Reporter or something along those lines, where a lot of things are going on with DC, movies are being canceled, characters are being, you know, recast and all that stuff. So let's just, let's just jump in here. You know, the rumors are out there that uh, Gal Gadot, who plays Wonder Woman, uh, Jason Momoa, who plays Aquaman, and then Henry Cavill, who plays, of course, Superman, might be recast with uh, Gunn and Saffron's upcoming plan for the DC uh, universe. Now, Flash director Adam Machete and uh, Indiana Jones director James Mangold are excited to be doing business with uh, Gunn and Saffron-led studio. Now, let's let's jump into the Wonder Woman of it right now. So, Wonder Woman 3... As I drop my soda bottle out of nowhere, um, Wonder Woman 3 has been canceled. And this is not one of those uh, like Batgirl situations. Just rehash that nonsense. Um, if this bottle doesn't stop dropping, get away from me, bottle. All right. Um, so Wonder Woman 3 was canceled, but it wasn't canceled necessarily by the studio as much as it was. Uh, apparently, Patty Jenkins walked away because she didn't like the notes that she was given about her uh, treatment um, of the her treatment, which was, you know, her you know mock up of what Wonder Woman 3 would end up being. Uh, she did have the opportunity for another pass, but decided to walk away. Uh, this is not the only film that has been uh, shelved for Patty Jenkins, it seems, because her Star Wars movies. Either here, you know, it seems very much like that movie is going to be canceled. It's It hasn't fully been canceled, but it has been taken off of the release schedule and no news whatsoever going on with that. But ever since this news came out, like, oh my God, Gal Gadot is going to be replaced. And Gal, uh, two days before this news came out, tweeted about you know, how excited she is to play Wonder Woman. Can't wait to uh, see what's going to happen in the future with the character. So I, I don't think she's going anywhere. 
I would be highly surprised if she's going anywhere. She's been fantastic as Wonder Woman. You know, 1984 is met with, with, with some criticism. Again, it's one of those movies of the DCU that I have not gone back to watch. I have no real desire to go back and watch. Uh, there's bits and pieces I enjoyed. I remember when the movie came out and I reviewed it. I think I was very positive about it, but as time's gone on, I'm like, I don't know. Um, apparently, from what we understand, with Wonder Woman 3, it was going to have something to do with Steve Trevor being put in the Lazarus pit and, like, fucking, what are we doing? You know, this is the Wonder Woman trilogy, not the Steve Trevor trilogy, all right? Let's, you know, I'm glad that movie was canceled. The movie's going to be freaking a disaster. So I'm glad that happened, but I I, I don't think anything's going to happen with the gal, okay? Uh, Jason Momoa, we'll get back to. Henry Cavill is Superman. So we know uh, now at this point, everybody knows it's been all over the place, that Superman uh, showed up at the end uh, in the credit scene for Black Adam. Uh, and it was Henry Cavill, Superman. We know The Rock fought to have him in the film, all that stuff. And now uh, there's a rumor that Man of Steel 2 is up for question. And, you know, is it going to happen or is it not going to happen? And, you know, it's... I don't know why people get so stressed at all about these things. So... James Gunn was asked recently, because James Gunn shared a tweet. We're going to get some more James Gunn's tweets, because he, you know, as smartly as he can, uh, talked about all this, uh, you know, reporting and all this stuff that's going on. So he, he tweeted uh, anniversary for uh, for one of the classic Superman films, and somebody asked a question on there. You know, the question goes as... Uh, let's see, the Twitter user asks, if we're going to see a Superman in the new era as we've been uh, starved starved of the greatest comic book character on the big screen for ages, speaking of the fact we haven't seen Superman on the screen for a long time, except for obviously we just saw him in Black Adam. James Gunn replied to this, saying, yes, of course, Superman is a huge priority, if not the biggest priority. Which is not new news. If people would pay attention and stop overreacting about things, you'll remember, I, even, I believe, even before Gunn got there, that the, the head over there at DC and Warner said that Superman is important. It was, it was Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Harley Quinn, and I think there may have been one other character, and then they are going to try to bring in new characters, which is fine. Like, stop overreacting. Uh, the other rumor that's out there is that Jason Momoa will be done playing Aquaman after Aquaman 2 comes out and will be transitioning to the character Lobo uh, since they share some kind of resemblance to each other, I guess. Uh, you know, we'll see where that ends up going. Uh, you know, all of this reads to me like people are just trying to read way too much into things you know if i'm gonna read into people reading into things you know they're reading way too much into this stuff like recently with the black adam um box office like they read into this and they jump all over and i swear dc gets attacked more than anything on the internet and it's annoying as hell um but you're wrong you know, all those people who are dogging Black Adam for his uh, box office, you're wrong. You know, you're believing the wrong reports. And so I'm going to leave it at that because I don't feel like arguing with you morons. But, you know, uh, let's go to James Gunn's tweet. And it was a long tweet. So I copied all of it. And I think this, you know, should clear up everything for for everybody. So his tweets read, and this, of course, in his voice. So as for the story yesterday in The Hollywood Reporter, some of it is true, some of it is half true, and some of it is not true, and some of it we haven't decided yet whether it's true or not. Although this first month at DC has been fruitful, building the next 10 years of story takes time, and we're still just beginning. Yeah, they're just beginning, people. Uh, Peter and I chose to helm DC Studios knowing we were coming into a... When coming into an environment, both in the stories being told and in the audience itself, and there would be an unavoidable transition period as we moved into telling a cohesive story across film, TV, animation, and gaming. Again, so right there, let's look at his thing. Unavoidable transitional period. There's a transition that's going to happen. Yes, there is. We're going to move away from the Snyderverse. I'm positive we're moving away from that. Does that mean characters are being recast? I don't think so. Um, but in the end, the drawback of that transitional period where 
We're dwarfed by the creative possibilities and the opportunity to build upon what has worked in DC so far and to help rectify what has not. We know we are not going to make every single person happy every step of the way, which you can't. People love to complain in this world. But we can promise everything we, and I was adding that, and James Gunn didn't say that. You know, I was adding that in there. Uh, back to him. But we can promise everything we do is done in the service of the story and in the service of the DC characters we know you cherish and we have cherished our whole lives. As for more answers about the future of the DCU, I will sadly have to ask you to wait. We are giving these characters and the stories the time and attention they deserve, and we ourselves still have a lot more questions to ask and answer. Which is true. People, calm down. Relax. It's okay. I know we're in this world where everybody's like, gimme, 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 gimme right now. You know, uh, like, wait, it's okay. They're going to get this thing figured out. We've got some time before. They're building the stories out. They're working their way into these things. Okay. We are not close. We're never, honestly, we're not even close right now. We don't know what their plan is. They have not told us what their plan is. We're not going to know what their plan is till they tell us what their plan is. Stop trying to break news. You're, you're not going to be able to break the news. They will tell us when this happens. We have, what, one, two, three, four, four or five films left from D.C. before the gun transition happens. Right? We have Black Adam. We, um, we have, we have uh, Shazam 2 coming up. We have The Flash, we have Blue Beetle, and we have Aquaman. Once those films are done, we're going to start seeing DC stuff. Now, Gunn said, and I talked about this on a recent episode, that he had his hand on some of those projects. But mostly, his stuff will start taking over, and his story will start building after Aquaman is done. Whether that means characters are being recast or not, again, maybe Jason Momoa is changing. I highly, highly doubt we're losing Gal Gadot or Henry Cavill. That would just be insanity on another level. You know, I, I, especially when we just got Henry Cavill back and we just saw how much people love the fact that Henry Cavill's back. Um, so, yeah. Like, calm down, relax, take a breather. It's okay. We'll get there when it's time to get there. Uh, let's see. Moving into other DC news, Todd Phillips shared uh, uh, the first image for Joker 2. Uh, with Joaquin Phoenix, of course, reprising the role of Arthur Fleck, shows him uh, getting a shave. Uh, while filming is starting, fans will not be um, seeing the film until October 2024. So we've still got a while till that movie comes out. But Joker Fuledu with uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga is very much in the filming process. Which I'm still interested in, man. I, you know, I can't wait to see it. I, I enjoyed the other Joker movie. I haven't watched it in quite some time. It is one of those movies... That is good, but it is a, um, a strong subject matter. So it's one of those films that you don't, you know, jump into too easily. You know, it's going to take some time. But of course, it's a very well put together movie. But again, the subject matter is one of those things that's a uh, hard beat to jump into sometimes. All right. Uh, jumping from DC news into horror news. Uh, as you may or may not know, there's a new Scream movie on the way. Um, and apparently it's going to be the goriest of all the Scream films to ever exist. That is according to cast member Melissa Barrera, who recently told Collider, quote, there was a saying on the set because directors Matt and Tyler were always asking for more blood and more sweat. Uh, they always just wanted more, more blood spritz was the saying because they would just always want more. With the last Scream, they were tiptoeing and trying to be very respectful of what the franchise had been up until that point and keeping their inner gory dreams at bay. But with this one, they were like, we're going to go all out. It's potentially a hundred times glorier, end quote. Reminds me of Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Remember with his first film, he kept it very traditional to um, the subject matter. Of course, he had his spin onto it, which I love. But um, with Halloween 2, he was able to go in the full Rob Zombie mode with that one. So, don't have full Rob Zombie mode, but a lot of Rob Zombie mode on that one. Um, okay. I don't really think of the Ghostface films as, like, gory films. I, I don't know what it is. I think I think that was one of my takeaways from the film that came out this year. Wow. Um, that it was, it seemed more brutal. And I haven't revisited the whole Scream franchise in a while. Maybe that'll be something I can do on Nightmare on Revealed Street in the future. But 
I don't know. For some reason, I just don't picture those films as like super gory films. So I don't know how I feel about it getting gory. Or we'll see. Uh, speaking of really gory films, so uh, Saw news. The tenth Saw film we also know is on the way, and apparently, Shawnee Smith is in talks to return to the franchise to play. Uh, we would assume the character Amanda Young, which I have no problem with. Um, I mean, it's the tenth film. I would assume. It's for flashback purposes. Uh, if you've seen the franchise, you understand what I mean. Especially with Tobin Bell being back as well. It's like, it's got to be flashbacks. I, I don't know where they're going with that. Um, I like Shawnee Smith. She's She was good in the series. Uh, you know, I liked her on Becker. She was great on that as well. I, I don't know. I don't know what the plan is with these soft films. It just seems like they're movies they kind of just put out for the purposes of putting out sometimes. You know, uh, some of them are... Some of them were good, and a lot of them were just, you know, again, let's let's up the ante, man, make it as crazy as possible. So, we'll see how it goes, but Shawnee Smith is apparently returning to the franchise. Uh, let's see, Haunting of Hill House and Midna uh, Midnight Mass creator Mike Flanagan, uh, who is, of course, moving over to Amazon, we talked about that recently, is doing an adaptation of Stephen King's The Dark Tower as a TV series. Uh, Flanagan says he envisages his adaptation of The Dark Tower for which he's already written a pilot script as a five-season show with uh, two standalone feature films as follow-ups. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of planning for the future. And he has, of course, talked to Stephen King about the plans for the adaptation, which is um, not the first time I think this property's been on film. Yeah, yeah, they had the, the movie with Matthew McConaughey, right? Yeah, 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 Matthew McConaughey and Idris Elba. I haven't seen it, but I remember that movie happened. Uh, let's see, quote, this happened because I sent him a very, very detailed outline of what I wanted to do with it, and it was in response to that that he gave us the rights. A project like this I wouldn't want to be involved in at all if we were taking it in a direction that was going to be blasphemous to the Stephen King material, but he's been very, very supportive and very excited about what we'd like to do with it, end quote. Stephen King properties still seem to be um, high priority. Uh, we did have the announcement of the It prequel series that is hitting HBO Max at some point in time. Now Amazon's going to have The Dark Tower. So, cool. You know, as long as it's good. I don't really have Amazon, so I can't watch it. I think my brother has it, though. I should watch it with him. Which we had fun watching the last Stephen King show. Um... Castle Rock, that was good. Can't believe that show didn't continue. Now let's see. Uh, David Harbour, you know him from, of course, Stranger Things, and Jodie Coomer. Uh, is that from Killings Eve? What do I know her from? I know her from something. She was in um, The Nice Guy, The New Guy. The Nice, The Fun Guy. Free Guy. There we go. <laughs> Free Guy. She was in that movie. That's what I know her from. They are going to be teaming up for a uh, upcoming horror video game, apparently. In a recent interview, David Harbour was asked about his role in the upcoming Gran Turismo movie adaptation and uh, if he would like to start a video game in the future. Harbour responded with, quote, I actually have one coming out. Me and Jody Comer did a video game that will be coming out, I think it's next year, a horror game. Uh, cool. I'm into horror video games as long as it's not first person, so... Bring it on, man. I like David Harbour. I like Jody Comer. Um, could be a good time. Why not? Bring it on. Uh, let's see. In other movie news, Rush Hour 4 seems to be in the talks. Jackie Chan recently told a festival crowd that we're talking about a part four right now and that he is going to meet with the film's director to discuss the script. I didn't mention who the film's director was. Uh, so no telling if it's the same person who directed the first three films, but he... Is under some trouble, so I don't know if it would be him. But we'll see. Uh, the Rush Hour films, of course, happened. Um, the first one came out, what, 98? 98, and the last one came out, uh, Rush Hour 3 came out in 2007, which is, this news was very, you know, just um, coincidental, I guess, <laughs> because I was watching the Rush Hour trilogy recently. I uh, just watched Rush Hour 3 and finished watching Rush Hour 3. Still enjoyable. I had a good time with the films, you know, Rush Hour 3, man, you know, but Rush Hour 1 and 2 is so freaking good, so good. Um, Rush Hour 3, I'm not going to say it's like bad, bad, but, you know, it's not on par with the other two. Uh, so, yeah, go on. I'm fine with Rush Hour 4. I like Chris Tucker, I like Jackie Tan, Jackie Tan, Jackie Chan. Uh, they had a good chemistry in those films, so bring it on, man. Why not? 
Let's see, Alita Battle Angel sequel update. Uh, producer John Ladu, Lando, Lando, whatever, suck the names. Uh, told Deadline recently, quote, well, there's a little film called Alita Battle Angel, which we'd love to circle back into a sequel to. And I've been talking to Robert Rodriguez about that, and hopefully that comes to fruition, end quote. Hopefully it does, man. I liked Alita Battle Angel. I, that was one of those movies I randomly rented at a Redbox one time, and, you know, watched it and had a good time watching it, so... Give us a sequel, man. I think it's been, what, three years since the last movie came out? Uh, let's see. Uh, 2019. So, yeah. It's been, you know, not too long. But, you know, you think you would hear some kind of news about a sequel. And, you know, there you go. There's our first tease of a sequel. So, we'll see what ends up happening with that. And I'll keep you informed as the news happens. Let's see. A pilot based on the Witch Mountain franchise has been greenlit over at Disney Plus starring... Um, this show, this show, the review at Rob show is a big fan of this lady, Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, she will lead the cast of the pilot. Uh, the project is described as a modern take on the franchise and follows two teens that develop strange abilities and discover their sleepy suburb may not be as idyllic as it seems. Uh, this will be the latest Disney project that Bryce Dallas Howard will be working on. She has directed, of course, episodes of The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett, two shows I need to get back into. Um, and started, uh, let's see, Disney Films, she starred in Pete's Dragon, and she's also set to direct a reboot of The Flight of the Navigator. Like I said, the Review at Rob show is a fan of the Bryce Dallas Howard, so definitely give it a try for that. Uh, Escape from Witch Mountain is what this is going to be based around. Uh, that was a book that released in 68. Uh, they had Escape from Witch Mountain, the film, in 1975. Uh, there's two sequels, 78 and 82. Uh, there's a TV remake in 95. And, of course, there was a movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson that came out in 2009. So uh, Disney has circled that property multiple times. And they are going back to it for a Disney Plus uh, series, it looks like. So good luck to them. All right. And circling the last bit of news here, the Golden Globes announcements have been uh, announced <laughs> so let's go over some of these i'm not going to go fully into all of them but uh there, there, there is a good bit of them i do have here uh first thing we're going to talk about this is that tom cruise got snubbed uh he is not nominated for best actor in a drama for top gun maverick uh, which seems insane but uh maybe there's some drama circling this as well that uh, they think the golden globes may be uh, punishing Tom Cruise because back in 2001, 2001, 2021, uh, Tom Cruise decided to return three of his globe, decided to return the three globe trophies he'd won, uh, for Born on the Fourth of July, Best Actor, Jerry Maguire, Best Actor, and Magnolia, Best Supporting Actor, and protest for uh, lack of diversity at, within the HFPA. So there's some drama then they believe that Tom Cruise will not or was not nominated for that reason, but the film did get some nominations. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh here we go. Best motion picture drama Top Gun Maverick is nominated for that. It'll be up against Avatar The Way of Water, Elvis, uh heck yeah. Uh the Fablemans and Tar. Uh you yeah. know. Good luck to Top Gun Maverick. My votes with Elvis. Let's see, uh, best performance by an actress in a motion picture, drama, uh, Kate Blanchett for Tar, Olivia Coleman, Empire of the Light, Viola Davis, The Woman King, Ana de Armas Blonde, and Michelle Williams for The Fableman. Uh, maybe Mr. Wonderful and I should do like a pre-Golden Globe show where we give our picks and see what happens. I don't know. I feel like Ana de Armas is winning that one. Uh, best motion picture... Best performance by an actor in a motion picture drama, Austin Butler's Elvis, Brendan Fraser, The Whale, Hugh Jackman, The Sun, never heard of that one, uh, Bill, is that, not Bill Nye, not Bill Nye the Science Guy, but Bill Nye, Living, and Jeremy Pope, The Inspection, uh, I'm of course pulling for Austin Butler's Elvis, but it seems like it is Brendan Fraser's year to win, uh, so we'll see what happens there. And again, a lot of love to Elvis, but I don't know if Elvis is my number one film of the year. We're going we're gonna to talk about that on a future Thrill Me Podcast Network event. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Don't know yet. Really, I haven't put my list together. Uh, best motion picture, musical, or comedy. We got Babylon, The Banshees of 
Sheeran, everything, everything, everywhere, all at once. Glass Onion and Ives Out Mystery and Triangle of Sadness. Everything, everywhere, all at once has gotten a lot of talk this year. Uh, let's see, best before I haven't seen it. Best performance by an actress in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. We got Leslie Manville for Miss Harris Goes to Paris. <laughs> nice title. Margot Robbie for Babylon. Anya Taylor Joy for the menu. Emma Thompson for Good Luck to You. Um, Leo Grande and Michelle Yeoh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Uh, let's see, best performance by an actor. Um, on you, of course, or Margot. I don't care who wins that one. Anyone can win that one, be deserving. Best performance by an actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. We got Diego Calva for Babylon. Babylon's got a lot of nominations. Uh, Daniel Craig, I haven't seen Babylon, but it does look good from the trailer I've seen. Uh, Daniel Craig, Glass Onion, and Knives Out Mystery. Adam Driver for White Noise. Colin Farrell for The Banshees of Ishirin. Should have been the Batman, but whatever. And Ralph Fiennes for The Menu, also known as He Who Shot Not Be Named. Uh, best performance by an actress in a supporting role in any motion picture. Angela Bassett for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. God, she's so good in that movie. Uh, Carrie Con Condon, <laughs> the band she's there. That movie's got a lot of freaking pressing in. Here's everything, everywhere, all at once. Jamie Lee Curtis is nominated for best supporting. Ooh, Angela Bassett. I don't know if I can pull for you on this one. Uh, Dolly De Leon for Triangle of Sadness, and Carrie Mulligan for She Said. Uh, pulling for Jamie Lee Curtis or Angela Bassett, that one. Angela Bassett's so freaking good. Wakanda forever. Uh, but, you know, these award shows do not like comic book movies too much. Let's see. Best performance by an actor in a supporting role in an motion picture. We've got Brandon Gleason for The Banshees and Sheen. Barry Cohen for the same movie. Um, Brad Pitt, Babylon. God, I suck at names. Ki Ho Kwan for everything, everywhere, all at once, and Eddie Redmayne for the Good Nurse. Um, we'll see who wins that one. We got two people nominated for one movie there. Uh, let's see. Best director, motion picture: James Cameron for Avatar: The Way of Water. <laughs> Daniel Kwan and Daniel Schwert. Everything, everywhere, all at once. We got Baz Luhrmann for Elvis. Uh, Martin Medow for The Banshees of Sheen, and Steven Spielberg for The Fablements. Uh, I'll be pulling for Baz Luhrmann, but will not be shocked to see Steven Spielberg win this one. And of course, everything, everywhere, all at once has been a huge talk this year, so would not be surprised if they win there. Uh, best original song for a motion picture, we've got Carolina, where the Crawl Dads sing, music by Taylor Swift. Uh, Ciao Papa, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, music by Alexandra Desplant. Suck at names. Uh, Hold My Hand, Top Gun Maverick, music by Lady Gaga. Uh, Lift Me Up, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, music by Rihanna. And Natu Natu, RRR, music by M.M. Trevani. Uh, my vote is solidly with Hold My Hand, Top Gun Maverick. It's probably my favorite song of the year. Lift Me Up by Rihanna is very touching. And, of course, I love Tay Tay. So... Uh, three choices here I'll be happy with, but I want Lady Gaga to win that one. Uh, best television series, musical, or comedy. We've got Wednesday nominated. Mm, 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 mm. Great show. Glad to see it got nominated. Uh, Only Murders in the Building is nominated. Hacks, The Bear, and Abbott Elementary. Let's go Wednesday. Uh, best performance by an actress in a television series. Jenna Ortega for Wednesday is nominated. Fantastic. Let's go. Uh, let's see, that's Quinta Burson for Abbott Elementary, Kaylee Kuoko for The Flight Attendant, Selena Gomez for Only Murders in the Building, and Jean Smart for Hacks. Let's go, Jenna Ortega. Uh, best performance by an actor in a television series, Donald Glover for Atlanta, Bill Hader for Barry, Steve Martin and Martin Short, both nominated for Only Murders in the Building, and Jeremy Allen White for The Bear. Don't have a pick in that one. Um, so there you go. Those are some of the awards I nominated here. Let's we're getting very long on this episode. Let's jump into other parts here. Nominations by Motion Picture Distributor. Searchlight has the most with 12. A24 comes in second with 10. Netflix has 9. Paramount and Universal both have 7. Walt Disney Studios at 5. Warner Brothers has 3. Focus has 4. Alright, uh, moving forward. Nominations by Television Distributor. HBO Max and Netflix both have 14. Hulu has 10. FX has 9. Apple TV Plus, whatever the hell that is, has six. Uh, Disney Plus has one. Paramount has one. 
Uh, no, nominations by motion picture. The leader is the Banshees of Ershin at eight. Everything, everywhere, all at once has six. Babylon and the Fable Mins both have five. Elvis has three. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio and Tar also have three. Uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever has two. Glass Onion has two. And the Menu has two. RRR has two. Top Gun Maverick has two. Avatar The Way of Water has two. And Wednesday has two nominations. So let's go the things I like. <laughs> and that'll do it for this episode. Appreciate you joining in and listening to me ramble on like I do every week on the show. Again, please give us a like and subscribe on the YouTube, man. We're continuing to grow and have some fun over there with more things to come in 2023. Also, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok, man. All time fun stuff going on over there. As always, we appreciate all of your support with our shows uh, and can't wait to see what 2023 brings, man. But until then, stay strong, stay awesome. And remember that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next episode.